Sing praise to him and tell of all his wonderful acts. Glory in his holy name and let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. Remember the wonders he has done, his miracles and the judgments he pronounced. You, his servants, the descendants of Israel, his chosen ones, the children of Jacob. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He remembers his covenant forever, the promise he made for a thousand generations, the covenant he made with Abraham, the oath he swore to Isaac. He confirmed it to Jacob as a decree and to Israel as an everlasting covenant. To you I will give the land of Canaan as the portion you will inherit. When they were but few in number, few indeed, and strangers in it, they wandered from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another. He allowed no one to oppress them. For their sake he rebuked kings. Do not touch my anointed ones. Do my prophets no harm. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations and his marvellous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods, for all the gods of the nations are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Splendour and majesty are before him. Strength and joy are in his dwelling place. Ascribe to the Lord, all you families of nations, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due to his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the splendour of his holiness. Tremble before him, all the earth. The world is firmly established and it cannot be moved. Let the heavens rejoice, let the earth be glad. Let them say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Let the sea resound and all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Let the trees of the forest sing. Let them sing for joy before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Cry out, save us, God our Saviour. Gather us and deliver us from the nations, that we may give thanks to your holy name and glory in your praise. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Then all the people said, Amen, and praise the Lord. The second reading is from Luke chapter 17, verses 11 to 19. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus travelled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, Praising God in a loud voice, he threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise up and go. Your faith has made you well. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks for reading that so beautifully, Christina. Sorry, Tim, may I have the next slide, please? It's not. Thank you. So let's pray as we begin to think about this passage. Loving God, we thank you for this opportunity to hear your word and think about it together. We ask that you would speak to us so we may come to know you more and love you more. If we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I wonder how you feel about writing thank you letters. Now, I remember when I was a child, it was a big event after Christmas. We all sat around the kitchen table, and there was definitely a division of attitude between um, me and my sister and my brothers about who liked it and who saw it as a chore. So what about you? Do you think it's a chore? 
or is it a pleasure? Well, I actually really enjoy writing them. And I enjoy writing thank you letters because it's an opportunity for me to think about the person who's given me something or done something for me and to think about the thought they put into that gift, even if occasionally it's what the heck were they thinking. It also, I have to confess, I enjoy receiving them, as my godchildren know. And it's not because I need to be thanked, but it's more that it's A, reassuring that the post has actually delivered said present, but also an indication that maybe I was in the right ballpark of the choice. If we never get anything back, we don't know whether it was a good, happily received gift or not. So today, we're continuing our series in which we're exploring Jesus' invitation to new life that's rooted in Matthew 11. Jesus says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now last week we thought about what that invitation is and why we might need it. And today we're going to think about the part that Thanksgiving plays in that rest, in that restoration of our souls. Now, again and again, we read in the Bible about people being thankful. We heard it in both our readings. People who are thankful for who God is, thankful for what God's done, thankful for answered prayers, thankful for his work in their lives, thankful for the ways in which he's saved them. And in fact, thanks to Google, I can tell you that the concept of thanksgiving features over 100 times in the Old Testament alone. It seems unwilling to give me the figure for the New Testament, but we'll have to accept there's lots of it there. And again and again, we read in the Bible not only about people being thankful, but about people being reminded or even commanded to be thankful. So in Psalm 100, we read, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Or in Colossians, we read, And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Some of you may remember that one of the things that made me want to come and be your vicar was when I came on my secret visit to suss out the land, I saw the thank you board at the back of church in this church. Now, I've seen lots of prayer boards in churches, and they are good things. But I have to say, Sunnyside's the first church I've ever seen a thank you board in it. And I wanted to find out more about a community that thought that that was an important thing to do. And it's great that one of the things that's happened in our prayer meetings through the past year is we've got much better spending time saying thank you at the beginning of our prayer meetings before we go on to the asking. I think that's a good thing. So why is being thankful so important? Well, it's not because God needs our thanks and praise. He's not some insecure megalomaniac whose ego needs boosting or who needs groveling gratitude to prevent him turning off the tap of good things. No. We heard in our reading, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. As with so much that we are commanded or recommended to do, thanksgiving is important because it is good for us in our faith. It turns our eyes outwards and upwards. It turns our focus away from ourselves and towards God. And it changes our perspective and increases our faith. And I want to spend a bit of time thinking about those things now. Now, as some of you may know, the Preachers and Leaders um, group recently read a book by Graham Tomlin, who's the Bishop of Kensington, called Why Being Yourself is a Bad Idea and Other Countercultural Notions. A not very snappy title, but a book that we all found really challenging and interesting and helpful, and I commend it to you. And in it, Tomlin talks about the fact that we're a culture turned in on ourselves. That we've got this obsession with finding our true selves within and living out of that freedom. And that seems to be behind so much of the heartache 
of the world around us. We see it in individuals. If you only look inwards, you will find who you really are, and then you can really flourish. And we see it in communities. It's the driving force behind so much of the nationalism that's going on in the world today. But Tomlin reminds us that we find our true selves not by looking within, but by being drawn out of ourselves. When I was thinking about it, I was reminded of a little hedgehog. And we, what we need to do in order to experience the world fully is open out so that we can scurry around. Thankfulness helps us do this looking out because it involves recognising that behind the gift we're thankful for is a giver. Now, thankfulness is more than gratitude. The lots of modern well-being industry talks about the importance of cultivating an attitude of gratitude for the small blessings of everyday, ordinary life. And that's something we've all had to get better at, hasn't it, over the past year when our lives have shrunk Gratitude for roofs over our heads, for the beauty of creation, the kind word of a friend. Now, of course, gratitude is important because it enables us to recognise the good things in life. Those good things that have actually got very little to do with our work or our input. The sunset has nothing to do with our ability to do anything. But it only takes us so far. It may help us turn outwards from self-absorption and help us to begin to see that we are not self-sufficient but rely on others for what is so lovely about life. But gratitude is giving thanks for something. Thankfulness is giving thanks to someone. Thankfulness reminds us that what we have and who we are is a gift from someone. It's a gift of love. It's a gift from the creator of all things. It's a gift from God. And thankfulness is ultimately important because, as all the ads say, it is the gift that counts. And in the end, a gift is never really actually about the gift, however lovely that might be, but about the person who gave it and the relationship we have with the giver. It's why those glorious handmade and often quite random gifts from small children are so precious. It's why the value of a gift is never actually in what it costs, but in the love that inspired it. So thankfulness is so important because it's about our relationship with the giver of all things, with God. Thankfulness helps us to remember that we are created by a God who loves us. Thankfulness helps us remember that we are then held by a God who loves us. Thankfulness helps us to remember that we are saved, restored, made well by a God who loves us every much as he loved the 10th leper who turned back to Jesus and heard that his faith had made him well. In that passage that Christina read us from Luke, the word used for well is sozo, A Greek word which means restored to health, but also to be saved. The nine lepers were cleansed. They were cured of their leprosy. But the tenth was made truly well because his relationship with God was restored because he came back and gave thanks to the giver of what he'd received. But giving thanks is also important because it changes our perspective. This psalm of thanks that Christina read to us from 1 Chronicles was written when the Israelites had returned from exile. It's written to a small and vulnerable community whose hold on land must have felt somewhat tenuous and under threat. And that psalm is a summons to seek God and his strength, to seek God's presence Especially appropriate because it's designed to be sung in front of the ark. The ark was that chest that contained the Ten Commandments, a pot of manna, and Aaron's rod. That ark that was a symbol of faith and God's presence with his people. And the psalm recounts our reasons for thanks, in case we were wondering what we might be thankful for. There's all God's wonderful acts, the wonders, miracles, and judgments he's pronounced. 
There's God's faithfulness to his people, not just now, but for centuries. The covenant made with Abraham, the oath he swore to Isaac. There's thanks for who God is, because that's what it means to praise his name. His name sums up all that God is. It's why we pray, hallowed be your name. And he alone, we're reminded, is God. He alone is praised by all creation. He alone is worthy of praise and thanks, because unlike the idols we create, he is the God who made the heavens. He is good and faithful. And his love endures forever. And thanking God for all he is and what he's done changes how we feel about now. It's important in good times as it reminds us who the giver is so we don't take those things that we enjoy for granted. But it's even more important in bad times because it reminds us that God is faithful and he is at work even if Things are so dark, we cannot currently see it. Giving thanks helps us identify some of the blessings, even when times are hard. The blessings may be small, but they're definitely there if we take time to look. Now, of course, this doesn't negate the struggles of life or say that they don't matter. And the past year has brought lots of challenges and struggles, and we're going to think more about them next week. And it's important that we do acknowledge the truth of them, the pain of them before God, if no one else. But giving thanks does put those struggles in perspective, and it does remind us that God still loves us. And whatever circumstances we're in, nothing can change that. Now, Paul is a man, St. Paul is a man who knew something about being thankful when things are tough. Um, Paul experienced a level of toughness in life that, praise God and pray God, most of us won't have to. He got beaten for his faith. He got mocked for his faith. He got imprisoned for his faith and shipwrecked more than once. But he wrote to the Thessalonians, Rejoice always, pray continually, and give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And the psalm reminds us that if we can't identify things to be thankful for now, then let's think back to the past where God has blessed us and be thankful for that. It's what the psalms often do. We often read, particularly in the psalms, of lament about how I'm in a really bad place, but I'm going to remember all the good things God's done in the past, and I will feel that God is doing something here. It's what we heard in 1 Chronicles. Remember the wonders he has done. And it's extraordinary that in this psalm, they don't just go back to last week, last month, last year. They go all the way back to Abraham. That's hundreds of years ago. Even if we have to go back as far as Abraham, we will find things to praise God for. And it will lift our hearts because the same God who was at work in the lives of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and us last year is at work in our lives today. But giving thanks doesn't just change our perspective. It increases our faith In 1 Chronicles, we hear glory in his name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seeking God is linked with rejoicing and giving thanks. Seeking God through thanks reminds us of who the giver is, his love, his generosity, his faithfulness to us. It reminds us of all we've been given. It reminds us of our relationship with almighty God. Seeking God is rooted in our response to him. It begins with accepting that that invitation he offers is for us, with recognising it's God we seek and God we need. It begins with accepting the gift he gives us of salvation through Jesus and of entering into that relationship with him. But it continues with getting to know him and letting our, our relationship with him change us and how we live. Thanks is part of praise, and praise changes us by bringing us into the presence of God. 
Thanks is part of accepting Jesus' invitation to come to him. St. Augustine famously said, as I said at the nine o'clock last week, that we will only find our rest, that rest we seek, in God. So thanks is part of that rest because it brings us into God, relationship with God, and that strengthens and deepens our relationship. Jesus says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. The more we learn about Jesus and from Jesus, the more reasons we will have to be thankful. So let's give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. And all the people said, Amen, and praise the Lord. Let's just take a moment to think about what God is saying to us through his words and the words I've said. Let's give him 